Learning to solve the cube blindfolded is easier than you might think as there are only 20 pieces which means you normally have to memorize only about 20 pieces of information and we end up converting this information into a much easier form of memory. First I'll teach you the method we'll be using for solving which is different from normal speed solving methods. We'll solve one piece at a time only and we'll start with edges but we'll also look at corners later. So I'm going to solve each edge one by one starting by looking at the buffer. This is just the top right, specifically the top. So this belongs between the white orange centers but specifically the the white side because this is white on top. So that means this has to go here and I have an algorithm that can swap these two pieces and that is just the t-perm which goes like this. Now you can see this piece is solved and we're going to do the same thing for the next piece. So this one is yellow of yellow red. So this is yellow red and yellow specifically, I need to also get that piece over here so I can swap it with the same algorithm. So that can be done by doing D2 to move it here, L2 to move it here, swap them, and then put this back where it came from. So L2 and D2 puts it back. And now you can see this piece is still solved, this piece is solved, and I have another piece to work on. Now the tricky part is how do we get pieces up to here so we can swap it with the buffer? So these are called setup moves and we'll always bring something here, do the swap, and then move it back to where it came from. For setup moves, you're only allowed to use four types of moves, L, L wide, D, and D wide. If you use any other move, you'll move one of these three pieces and that's not allowed or the swapping algorithm doesn't work. So this is yellow of yellow green and that belongs right here, which means if I wanna swap with this, any D face target actually is exactly the same. You move it to the left side, move it to the top with L2 and that puts it right here. Then I can do the swapping algorithm and then put it back where it came from. For any equator target, which is any of these four, then you just have to move it to this spot or this spot, then you can move it up like this. Or if it was here, you can move it up like this. So this one is red of red green, which means I need this spot to go to one of these two. And that can be done like this. Then I can just move it to the top, swap and undo. Now this one's actually different. This is red green again, but it's the green on the buffer, which means I need this spot up to the top. If I did it the same way, it would actually end up here, not here, which means I need to do it a different way. And in this case, if I can't do it here, I'll do it here instead. So I'll move this one over to here, and then now I can move it up. Swap and undo. So D face targets and equator targets are the easy ones. Now for any other case, there's always one move you can do to turn it into one of those cases. For example, I showed how to swap to here, but not how to swap to here. In this one, I can just do L wide, and that actually makes it a D face target because it's now in the D face. So to continue this, I would do D to move it to the left, just like any D face target, then move it to the top, swap, and then undo those setup moves. And you can see I've swapped to green yellow. So I'll quickly go over a few more cases. For this one, you can get it to a D face like that. For this one, you can also do the same thing. For either of these two, you can do LY2 and that puts it at the bottom. And lastly, for this, this, or this, you set up to the equator. For example, this one, I can move it to here. Then I can solve it like an equator piece. So move it to this spot and move it up. And for this one, I just need to do a D2 to put it here and then solve it like I would for this one, which is move it to the equator. And again, move it up like this. A full list of setup moves is in the description if you need help, but remember you don't need to memorize them because I've already taught you how to figure these out. Now, if you're just solving along with this method, as you can see, I've solved a few of the edges. If you get the buffer in the right spot, then this doesn't tell you which spot you have to go to next. The buffer could be flipped or solved. It doesn't matter. If it's right here, then you pick any unsolved piece as your next piece. For example, I can just pick this one because it's easy, no setup moves. I can swap to there. So my next one would be green of green orange, which is right here, and I can just keep going. Now, if you've done everything except for one flipped piece, this is actually the same as before. We have the buffer in the right spot. So pick any unsolved piece. This one is unsolved. So I will swap to this one and then keep going. Now for corner pieces, we do the exact same idea, except we have a different buffer, a different target, and a different swapping algorithm. So the buffer is going to be right here, specifically the left side of the top left piece. And the target or where it swaps with is going to be right here, the bottom of the front right piece. The algorithm that swaps these two is the Y perm, but without F moves in the front and end. So that is like this. And that swapped this one with this one. And again, there are setup moves if you want to swap with different pieces than just this one. So in the setup moves, you're only allowed to use R moves, 
D moves and F moves. Anything else will cause the swapping algorithms to not work properly. Again, there's a full list of setup moves in the description, but here are a few examples. If I wanna swap with this one, it is just F prime to put it here and then swap and put it back where it came from. If you're trying to go to here, that is just R2 to set it up here and then swap and then R2 again. I can set up this one with R prime F. So these are easier to figure out yourself as there's only a maximum of two moves. So I highly recommend trying this method to solve all the edges and then solve all the corners on the cube to show that you understand how this works and then you can move on to blindfolded. So the only difference for blindfolded is instead of seeing a piece and then seeing where it should go, I'm going to figure that all out before I start turning. So before we start doing that, memorization will be a lot easier if we make up letters and also write things down. So here's how the lettering works. For edges, we start like this, A, B, C, D, going around clockwise. Then we go to the left side and start at the top again, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T is at the back, and then to face the bottom from the front, U, V, W, X. Now corners follow a similar thing, except we always start at the top left, so A, B, C, D, and so on. So over time, you'll know the letters better, and I happen to know them well, so I'll be going through this a little bit quickly, but feel free to pause if I'm going too fast. So we start by looking at the buffer and see where this one should go and memorize where that should go, because that's the first place we swap with. So yellow, red, this is yellow of yellow, red, so I need to go right here. This is the letter V. And then next, I look at where this one is, and this is red and green. So red of the red, green goes here. Make sure you don't point at the wrong spot because I was pointing here at the red. So then next I have to point right here, which is next to red. So this is the letter P. And then once you get a letter pair like this VP, then you could just write this down as you're starting. But for memorization, you memorize something like Viper. And then we would just continue. So this is blue of blue white. So we go to the blue white spot and the blue spot specifically, that's the letter Q. And then next, this is actually the buffer. So if we do run into the buffer piece, which is white red, then what this does is it puts the buffer piece back here, which means you know what to do from here. You should just pick any unsolved piece. For example, I can pick this one and this is the letter D. I can pick any unsolved piece I'd want, and when I do pick any unsolved piece I want, I have to make sure that I come back to either side of this piece at some point, otherwise this one is never getting solved. So just keep that in mind, we're coming back to this at some point. So next we see where this one goes, and that goes here, which is C, and then this one goes here, which is K, this goes to here, which is E. When you run back into the same piece that you chose, then this ends the cycle as well, and you can try picking a new piece again. So now I can pick this one, which is R, and then that goes to S, which goes to G, which goes to H. And as you can see, R and H are the same piece, which means I end that cycle as well. So for flipped pieces, I just choose one spot on it, then choose the spot that has to go to. So I can choose this one, which is T, and this one goes to here, which is N. To check if you're done is a little tricky because you have to know if you've solved every piece. You can kind of use your fingers to help you keep track of it at first, but you will definitely get better at this over time. Here's an example of what you could memorize for this, but if you're just starting, I recommend writing it down instead to make sure you don't make mistakes. So before solving, we have to memorize corners as well. So the buffer is here and we see where this one goes following the exact same rules. So this one goes to here, which is U. This one then goes to here, which is N. This goes to H. This one goes to V. This one goes to T. And this is the buffer, which means that we are done if there are no more pieces left to solve. And actually this one we haven't been to and it's not solved. So next I choose any spot on this, I'll choose M. And then we see where that goes. And this is white, so it goes to C. The only piece I haven't been to is this one, but it is solved, so actually I am done with corner memorization. And here's an example of what you could memorize for this. Once you've memorized everything, you would put on your blindfold and use your memorization as instructions for which piece to swap to. For example, the first one being V, I would then move it up to the place I swap with, do the swapping algorithm, and undo that. I would continue doing that for every single edge until I'm done all the edges and then I would move on to corners and do the exact same idea. As you can see, this one is now solved and I will end up solving them one by one by doing this if the memorization is correct. Now before we continue, they will always both be even or both be an odd number of letters. You can never have odd and even, otherwise you've made a mistake. Now if you have even and even, then you can just do the solve as I've described. Do all the edges, then do all the corners. But if you have odd and odd, then solve all of the edges and then do the parity algorithm and then solve all of the corners. The parity algorithm is just an R perm. 
Now, if you wanna see me do that whole solve, it's in the example solve video here on the end screen. I highly recommend trying it out yourself first to see if you can do it. Also, all the setup moves and answers to common questions are in the description. You can leave a comment if you have a new question, but your question may just be answered in the description. Thanks for watching, good luck solving, and I'll see you guys next time.